The careful process of gathering and examining evidence at a crime scene has always been integral to confidently identifying the culprit. Due to advances in both medical and forensic science, law enforcement can accurately rely upon laboratory analysis to help officers find and charge the right suspect. One of the most consequential investigation developments in the past 25 years has been the use of DNA in forensic identification. Let's go to Officer Aaron White, who is with Forensic Science Supervisor Jim Liberty at the Hennepin County Crime Lab Unit to talk about how DNA samples are gathered, processed, and analyzed. Thank you, Brian. Today we're at the Hennepin County Sheriff's Crime Laboratory in downtown Minneapolis. Kind of a cool segment we're doing, uh, talking a little bit about DNA analysis and some of the technology involved in that. And to do that, I'm joined by Jim Liberty. Jim, thanks for being on our show. You're welcome. And your title is? Forensic Science Supervisor. Okay, I always like to put you on the spot for that so I don't screw this <laughs> stuff up. But, but uh, as mentioned, this is kind of cool. We're in uh, one of your laboratories here. And uh, the thing we want to talk about today a little bit is DNA. It's a hot topic and uh, something that people see on TV all the time. And we thought, let's come here and see the real world. But we, we wanted to introduce uh, this box, one of your toys, a genetic analyzer, it says on there. That sounds pretty cool. Let's start there. Sure. Well, this instrument is a, uh, like you said, it's called a genetic analyzer. And the purpose of this thing is to actually produce the DNA profiles that we use to make the comparisons. Now, this really, this machine comes in at the very end of the whole DNA process. There's still, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to get the DNA ready to, to, to put onto this machine. Okay, so this, this isn't simple stuff. This is where we differ from TV a little bit. We don't have a magic wand or anything. So a sample comes in. Maybe you have some blood, let's say. Mm -hmm. What do we do with that? Right, so what we're going to do is when evidence comes into the laboratory, the first thing that we need to do is determine what, in fact, that biological fluid is. And so we start the process by examining the evidence. We document it completely because there's a good chance that this may end up in a court of law. So sure. we want to make sure that we have all that information available. And so now we, we use our scientists then begin the process of identifying whatever biological fluid there might be on that evidence. So if we're using blood as an example, then what we're going to do is we're going to first determine if there's blood on there. Um, we're going to determine whether or not it's human blood because there oftentimes you know, there can be different, um, you know, animal blood or anything like that on sure. there. And then once we've made that determination, now we start the DNA process. Because now we've determined what the biological fluid is, and now we want to try and see if we can't individualize that biological stain. We want to know who that came from. So we begin the whole, there's a, there's a process that we use to actually extract and purify the DNA that's contained in that blood stain. The next thing that we need to do is because a lot of times the stains that we get are extraordinarily small. Mm -hmm. They're very, sometimes hardly even visible to the human eye. And so what we need to do is take that tiny little amount of DNA that we've just recovered and we need to create more of it actually. Okay. And so we do a process called PCR, that stands for polymerase chain reaction. And what it does is it amplifies certain segments of the DNA that we've just recovered. And we don't amplify all of the DNA because we don't need all of it. But what we do get is little tiny, we amplify little tiny fragments that are known to be highly variable among people. And so by amplifying these fragments, we create more and more of them to the point now, to the point that it becomes relatively easy to test because we've just made, we've made a whole bunch of DNA out of very little. Sure. And so now we can get the actual uh, DNA profiles based on that information. How accurate is that identification once you have a good profile? Once we have that profile, the, uh, and if we have a, com a good, complete profile, it's essentially unique to anybody in the world. When you have that profile, maybe it doesn't match somebody that's on file yet, uh, or maybe it's relevant to another case. What types of databases and kind of bigger picture things are you doing mm -hmm. to use that data, even if you don't identify a suspect? Yeah, one of, one of the greatest things about uh, forensic DNA testing is we have the ability to, once we generate a profile, if we don't have anything to compare it to from a suspect, for example, we can look in these databases that are maintained throughout the United States. So every state has their own database that they maintain, as well as obviously the state of Minnesota. And if we have these unidentified profiles, then we can search every database within the country. And by doing that, oftentimes, very often, we're able to identify a suspect who's been previously convicted of another crime, and we can link them back to the crime that we just 
that we just tested. How has this process evolved, maybe even in your time here at the lab? Um, DNA has become much more high profile. We see it in the news. It's obviously very popular on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, are we seeing a lot more cases? And are we able to process more of this? Where has the technology taken that? Yeah, well, number one, we've seen a ton more cases. Um, we actually, here at our laboratory, we've, we, our caseload has increased by about 10 times in the last uh, eight years. So we've seen a huge demand for DNA testing. And a lot of that is fueled by the fact that we're so much better at, at getting DNA from very small samples. Sure. I should have pointed out earlier that uh, this laboratory and the work you guys do greatly benefits the Edina Police Department every day. And uh, you guys are doing this service not only for uh, the citizens of Hennepin County, but specifically in Edina and have uh, mm -hmm. done a lot of good work for us. So we thank you for the efforts and we continue to watch as this evolves. So thanks for sharing some of the information about uh, what goes on behind the scenes of DNA analysis. Oh, absolutely. Ed. Thank you for uh, inviting me here today. I appreciate it. Jim Liberty with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Crime Lab, and we'll return to you, Brian. Thank you, Aaron.